Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Crossing the Line where in every episode we always try to cross that line. I am Jerry Peralta and as always we have Matt Entrican and Josh Coleman. Guys, how are you doing today? Doing very well, Jerry. How about you, Josh? I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. Happy to be here. Good day. Well, let's just kick things off. We have a packed show, but to kind of get things going on, to start things off, a little fun. We had a pie bet for the Super Bowl, and if I'm not mistaken, Josh, you lost. Yeah. And exactly. uh, we, we, Matt got the pleasure of pieing you in the face. I went yes, a more different route. Tried to be a little bit, of, throw a little bit of psychological warfare at you, but I mean, let's send it out to, let's send it outside of Escalante Hall and see what happens. Hey, what is up, Crossing the Line fans? We are out here at Escalante again as we get ready to announce the winner, winners of the pie bet, that being myself and Matt Entrican. We won the Super Bowl pie bet with, with Tampa Bay Buccaneers pretty much demolishing Kansas City Chiefs 31 to nine. Josh, I'll get to you in a second. <laughs> Matt, I mean, you, you've redeemed yourself. You lost the NBA Finals pie bet, and now, and now you get to pie, Josh. I mean, how does that feel? Well, football's always my forte. I knew I knew football better than Josh does. You know, basketball, you know, it's like a, you know, I'll, I'll master it at one dot, at one point. But you know, I've been waiting for this moment to give Josh what he deserves and um, just show him that, show him what it feels like to get pied in the face. So he's not going to enjoy this for sure. Oh, for sure. And you, like you said, basketball is kind of a toss up and we both won this bet, but I figured I'd let you have the glory of pieing, Josh. I, I myself, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, psychological warfare on Josh here. Josh, I prepared a speech for you, okay. but before I get to that, I mean, how are you feeling? Honestly, you guys picked my favorite pie, so I'm not super upset. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, I mean, it sucks to get a pie in the face, mainly because I have a lot of things to do after this, but, you know, it happens. It does happen. It does happen. So before we pie you, I, I, ha I wrote a little speech for you, Josh. I mean, just, just because I beat you in a pie bet and, you know, we're such good friends. And <laughs> I don't know if we'll be that after this, but I'm going to just read you my speech. You never break my heart, Jerry. Good to know. But, Josh, I mean, I'm just going to say this. I want you to remember... In all the years to come, in your most private moments, I want you to remember your pick and our pick. And I want you to remember the men who beat you in this pie bet, Josh. And for those of you who get that reference, applause to you. Um, but with further, without further ado, Matt, how about you uh, go ahead and pie Josh? All right. Uh, work with me, Wayne. Don't you blow my hood down. I can't let all of this pie go to waste, huh? All of us. Anybody? Get one of them? My gosh. Also, note that I generously gave Josh my own poncho. That he did not clean off from the last pie bet. True, but still. <laughs> all right, are we ready? In three, two, one. <laughs> What a waste of a <laughs> what a waste of a pie. But that's gonna do it for us here outside Escalante. Let's send it back to you guys in the studio. Man, that was a lot of fun. And I mean, for those of you who may not have gotten the reference, it's from Batman Dark Knight Returns Part Two. Um had to have a little fun with Josh there, but I mean, Josh, you did waste a lot of that pie. Matt was just trying to give it to you. I didn't want pie on my hand. I mean I didn't that's think it was that big of a deal. I, one, I had to get back in the building. You denying free food, man? Come on, that's the, that's the cardinal rule of being a college student. Jerry bought it. I'm only wasting his money. <laughs> that's true. I still do owe Jerry money for that. That's whatever. Water under the bridge. But let's just get into the first topic. I mean, guys, Patrick Mahomes lost, just lost in a sad way in the Super Bowl. And he lost to Tom Brady, who is now the GOAT. I mean, is there ever going to be a point where Patrick Mahomes can become the GOAT after this loss? 
Josh, I'm going to give that to you. Yes, I do think Patrick Mahomes can still become a GOAT. He's four years into his career, so I think it's a little early to push him out of this conversation, especially after the first four years that he's had. They've been incredible if you haven't been watching. But here's why I say that. Because Patrick Mahomes is such a different kind of style player than Tom Brady, the plays, the crazy plays that he's able to make week in and week out are going to propel him in this conversation because I think the media is going to take this one over in about five to seven years as he gets a little bit later in his career. Um, but here's why I say this. First four years, I compared these two today. And first four years, you look at their careers, they have ended fairly similarly with Tom Brady winning two Super Bowls, Mahomes winning one, Mahomes winning an MVP, which Tom Brady did not in those first four years. But if you look at the first Super Bowl that Tom Brady wins, he gets there behind the tuck rule, and so goes on to win the Super Bowl MVP, which is impressive, yes. Second year in the league, the GOAT, and he started to prove it early, but Mahomes also won this league MVP his second year. It's not a Super Bowl, but it's still a high accomplishment, especially because that was his first year starting, and that was also Brady's first year starting as well. Third year, Patriots missed the playoffs, which Mahomes has yet to do. Um, and then third year, Patrick Mahomes wins the Super Bowl and the MVP, Super Bowl MVP, sorry. Um, and Brady's fourth year, the Pats win the Super Bowl behind a defense that gave up a league low 14.9 points per game. Um, and then Patrick Mahomes, of course, loses in the Super Bowl. So I think that right now, over the four, first four years that we've seen Patrick Mahomes, it's hard to say that he can't ever become a GOAT because I think he's got all the tools to break all the passing records, touchdowns, passing yards, um, attempts, completion, completion percentage, perhaps quarterback rating, but that one is a little bit tougher. I think he has all the tools and the capabilities to do that. It's just a little too early to push him out of this conversation because he's only four years into his career. <clears throat> Here's the problem, Josh. You can win all the MVPs you want. You can have the most electrifying play style, but it does not matter unless you are a winner. Okay, right now, here's the vibe in the NFL, is that we are starting to understand that we're going to have the same argument about Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady that we are currently having with LeBron and Jordan. Yeah, like the that, only yeah. difference is, is that we're able to see Brady and Mahomes head to head. Okay, and since we have that, that great honor, and we've seen Tom Brady beat Patrick Mahomes, this is what it's going to take for Patrick Mahomes to eclipse Tom Brady. He has to win at least nine or 10 Super Bowls. Nine or 10 Super Bowls. He is at one. And here's the biggest reason why I think Tom Brady can never be passed, at least not by Patrick Mahomes. It is because so far in Mahomes' career, despite all the accomplishments, he has been a failure as a quarterback. Not, well, I'm gonna rephrase, not a failure as a quarterback, but he has failed. Okay, we will never be able to forget that Patrick Mahomes lost to a 43-year-old quarterback. And not just a 43-year-old quarterback, but a 43-year-old quarterback who is playing on a team that is a perennial loser. Okay, and what I mean by Patrick Mahomes being a, having failed the last three years is that in 2018, you were the number one seed in the AFC, and you failed to get the win. This past year, you were on the, clearly the best team and you failed to get the win. Tom Brady is a winner. He finds ways to win. And I, it, it doesn't matter. And I know in 2018, there was the offside call. It doesn't matter. This year, you had to beat up an offensive line. It doesn't matter. You find a way to win. Tom Brady found a way to win his first year with the Patriots. And that's the bottom line. Find a way to win. He was with the Buccaneers, just a heads up there. He was not with the Patriots. Wrong team. But I get where you're coming from. No, I said in Tom Brady's rookie year. Oh, in his rookie year? Okay, I didn't hear that part. I just figured you were just like, he just won a Super Bowl his first year with the Patriots talking this year. Never mind. Go on. Continue. Neither, neither player played their first year outside of one game. Well, I mean his first playing year. No, that's what I like. Their rookie year, neither played a yeah, game yeah, outside yeah. of one. Okay. So, yeah. Um, but I, hearing that, I agree I don't necessarily think Mahomes has to win nine or ten Super Bowls. I think that's a bit lofty because, let's be honest, I don't think a team is going to get to nine or ten in quite some time, and they've had a hundred years to do so. I think Patrick Mahomes has the ability to win eight, nine. It, 
especially if they can keep the weapons around him. It's always going to be tough. It's the NFL. Winning the Super Bowl is not, not necessarily the easiest thing to do. Tom Brady's done it several times, as we all know, which is why he's considered the GOAT. But to push Mahomes out of this conversation, which offsides rule, which you brought or called in that first year, which prevented them from going to the Super Bowl. They get there this year. They lose three years. They've had a shot at a Super Bowl, and he's started three years. I think it's a little bit um, premature to say that he can't get back to the Super Bowl and win eight or nine, and I think it's lofty, but I think he can do it. it he's just got to climb that cliff. It's, it's, I mean, and then that's the thing is the cliff seems insurmountably high. You know, and you're only at one Super Bowl. You are kind of edging through all these other obstacles so far in the first three years. You know, you could have lost just as easily have lost to the 49ers if it weren't for a Jimmy Garoppolo pass just being a couple yards too long to Manuel Sanders. You would have lost that Super Bowl too. And their offense, you know, really kicked it into gear in the second half. But we don't have to bring that up. That that pass to Manuel Sanders was late. Was late in the game. They had 30, that, they lock it in. Thirty points in the second half, though. Yeah. We're just not going to bring that up. I'm just saying, the little things happen to every team, and you can't excuse Patrick Mahomes for not making it to the to the Super Bowl in 2018 because of an offsides call. You, no, but okay, we, you guys can go back and forth on that for a while, and I'm actually going to let you go back and forth on that for a little longer. But moving on to the next topic, which is relatively in the same boat, I mean, how much blame is on Patrick Mahomes? after this loss in the Super Bowl. I have my own opinion. I don't think he is too much to blame for that. It's, it's difficult when you're receiving core, you're one of the best receiving cores in the league cannot make a catch that saves their life. But Matt, what do you think? Patrick Mahomes deserves most of the blame. And here's why. When you are a quarterback in this league, and especially when you're a quarterback getting paid $500 million in this league, like I was saying earlier, you need to find a way to win. It doesn't matter that your receivers were missing catches. There were really only two that were that blatant. It doesn't matter that your offensive line wasn't there. You need to find a way to win. That's Patrick Mahomes' job. That's the QB's job. Find a way to win. Tom Brady has been doing it his entire career for, for two decades, for the whole millennium, guys. Patrick Mahomes... It doesn't matter what the little things are. As I was saying, you need to find a way to win. It doesn't matter how many jaw-dropping plays you make. It doesn't matter how cool a throw is. It doesn't matter how great a play was. Win the game. Hold on. Did I mishear you in the last segment? You said the little things matter. This one, you said they don't matter? Uh, come again? You said last segment, little things matter for Mahomes being the GOAT. This segment, little things don't matter? No, no, no. The little things matter. I'm saying that they're not, ex you can't use them as excuses. Okay. I just wanted to check because I thought I misheard you and I wanted some clarification. Uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes, is, uh, you need to be the reason for winning. Okay. Or losing. Yeah, no, I just wanted some clarification. Okay. Okay. I thought I misheard you. I thought you were being sarcastic. No, I, I genuinely thought I misheard you. Um, to that, I, I don't think, I'm with Jerry. 20% of the Mahomes, or the blame goes to Mahomes and his receivers. 20% goes to the coaching staff, 20% to the defense, 20% to the O-line, and 20% to the putter. Pretty even, mainly because first quarter, the punter shanks two punts under 30 yards, drops a snap, and three punts. I get he's a rookie, but you, can't, you just can't have that happen, especially in the Super Bowl. Then that sets up the early touchdowns for the Buccaneers. You already are down a fair steep. And then I'm going to jump back to the start of the game. I think the Chiefs coaches came in expecting Tyreek Hill to put up 269 receiving yards again. It didn't look like they made any adjustments from their first game or even from the playoffs coming into the Super Bowl, which is just a big no-no, especially as you're getting blown out first, first quarter, second half, or first half. There didn't seem to be a ton of adjustments made in the second half. That is on the coaching staff, Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy. The, that has to happen within the coaching staff. It can't all be on Patrick Mahomes. There's 11 guys on that field that are all required to do their job as well. And offensive line, they're missing their two left tackles. They have to do a better job. It's Super Bowl. You have to step up. You have two weeks to prepare. And I know I think Eric Fisher came out the last week, but you have to be ready and prepared for those moments, especially in the Super Bowl. And then to 20% of the defense because they just look God awful. I'm not, I can't, I don't have anything to say about them. The holding penalties, which they were called for all night, 
they just never seem to get away from it. There's only one penalty that I can really think of that was blatantly a missed call. It was the Mike Evans pass interference to end the second quarter because tripping I don't think should end in pass interference, but that's with besides the point. But here is why I don't think it's fully Mahomes' fault. It's because he was doing everything he absolutely could to win this game. He rushed for 497 yards trying to get away from pressure that because his left tackles weren't there or his two tackles weren't there. And then the two passes, the Tyreek Hill missed catch that boinked off his face mask and then the Darrell Williams that boinked off his face mask. Those are the two most blatant ones and they really could change the game. But 46 of the targets to the receiving core, 20 of them were not caught. And those are, that's a big stat. 20 drops or 20, 20 passes. 20 drops or 20 incompletions? 20 incompletions, but 20 targets, some of those are drops. You know, I, I couldn't find the exact drops number happen. of drops. Buccaneers had drops too. Yes, but not 20 of them, not 10 of them. They dropped, a, dropped an easy pass in the end zone. And the Chiefs dropped too. And that's the small things that you can't blame Patrick Mahomes for. Tyreek Hill, it was a little bit of a tough catch, but it goes through his hands, hits him in the face. Darrell Williams, Patrick Mahomes is in the air parallel to the ground. Gets that ball perfectly to Darrell Williams. You have to catch that. I don't care that you're a running back. You have to catch that. And those things in, in Super Bowls, those plays that are missed m matter, especially those little things, those 20 incompletions, drops, whatever you want to call them, those matter. And to discount that and say Patrick Mahomes is the sole reason the Chiefs lost after their defense played uninspired, they were missing their two tackles, their coaching staff never seemed to make adjustments, and he did everything he possibly could to win the game, and the Chiefs didn't do anything to help. First thing, I didn't say he was the sole reason. I said he was most of the reason. And but the thing, fact, but it doesn't matter what catches were dropped. The fact that you couldn't even score one touchdown, you're supposed to be the best offensive player in the world. You can't even throw one touchdown. You can't make one score. You can't even run for a touchdown. Come on, Patrick Mahomes. He botched his, he botched his preparation. He botched his team's preparation. And then that's the bottom line. It's not he just about the game either. He doesn't handle his team's preparation. Okay. He's a part of it. He should be a part of it, but he doesn't handle it. Moving he should be. On. He should be. Moving on. Because I don't want there to be fisticuffs coming into <laughs> the to the show. I mean, to, to be fair, I'm going to leave it at this. Mahomes was only sacked three times, so it was not terrible for Ooh. him. Moving on. Guys, Sean Watson is looking for an out. He no longer wants to be part of the Houston Texans organization. And honestly, who could blame him? This is an organization that shows they do not care for their franchise quarterback. They do not, they do not care for the fans. And, I mean, I mean, just not giving your guy any say and any hirings, play calling. So he wants an out. And he's mentioned two teams specifically that he would like to go to. But I, just for the sake of making it broad where do you think would be the best fit for Deshaun Watson Josh uh, I'm gonna give this one to you I want to start with my bias pick because I really as a fan of the Denver Broncos please do whatever it takes to get this man in a Bronco uniform I would love it and it would be beautiful but in all seriousness for this question I think the New Orleans Saints might be the perfect place for him because Drew Brees on the way out, he looks like he's going to retire and they're actually going to drop his salary. They're going to restructure his contract, which is good because he is making way too much money for him being as old as he is. Two years, $50 million. Definitely is a, it was a thank you contract, which I respect, but it was more than he needed at the time because it kind of handicapped the team in the salary cap. But if you pair him with Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara, those are two weapons that he's never had before. And Deshaun Watson is more mobile than Drew Brees ever was. So I think you can add a ton, especially with Taysom Hill, you can add a ton offensively in with him. And then you look at the defensive side, they are really good and they can compete for Super Bowls even with Drew Brees, who's kind of been hit or miss lately, especially in the playoffs. His, his team, I, I can't, they, they struggle in the playoffs. I can't seem to figure it out, but I think this would be perfect. I know Jameis is there, but... I would take Deshaun Watson over Jameis Winston, and I assume you guys all have that kind of same sentiment. But he led the league in passing yards with 4,823 4, last year, and he didn't have a 
top tier receiving core and they traded away to DeAndre Hopkins, who was his top target, I think if you put him with Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas, things open up offensively. And I don't see where this move would go wrong if he was traded to the Saints. And he, I'm sure he would happily go there. Here's the problem with picking the Saints. We're not going to talk about Denver Broncos here. Denver Broncos society, we, know, we, all, we, all, we all want that, so it's just going to be biased opinions yeah. all around. It's uncertain how the future of the Saints is going to look because they are going through a transition period right now where we see Drew Brees on his way out. Sean Payton could also be on his way out, and you have I no idea. <laughs> you have no idea what the culture, the atmosphere of a team is going to look like after that happens. And culture is one of the most important things to Deshaun Watson. Point number two, Louisiana is a state that has, out of the 50 U.S. states, has the 14th highest state income or state income tax. Well, something to think about. Something to think about. Didn't know but, that. but you know who doesn't have any state income tax? Florida. Who plays in Florida? Miami Dolphins. Where would be a great fit for Deshaun Watson? The Miami Dolphins. Why? You've got a great young head coach in Brian Flores. You've got a great GM. Both African American, by the way, you can stay close to home. Florida is only a few hours away from his hometown in Georgia. And notably, he has stayed, I know you picked the Saints, but he has stayed in the South, Deshaun Watson, his entire life, from birth from high, to high school, to college at Clemson, and to the NFL. He is in the South. You know what I mean, all the signs are pointing to the South. Uh, and most notably, Miami got great Cuban sandwiches. I mean, I can't, you can't go wrong with a good Cuban sandwich. I'm not even saying. Lie. Man, man I, I didn't eat before this, and now you guys are just making me more hungry. And I know, I'm kind of at that same point, Jerry. <laughs> to, uh, crew trip to the nearest Cuban sandwich place. I don't think there's any Grand Junction. Uh, we're Where gonna we should have to go is Leadville. I hear they have a great uh, Cuban sandwich place, Bucci or something like that. Hmm. Huh. Well, yeah. you know, those are <laughs> fine and dandy picks. I mean, I, I have an idea where Watson should go, and it's, I mean, it's probably going to be one that I'm going to be met with a lot of hate for it. But I mean, the New England Patriots. You have a guy like Bill Belichick who can really turn, who, if anybody can make Deshaun Watson even better, it's going to be Bill Belichick and that system. And be, be, the Patriots have all the leverage right now to make a trade for it for Deshaun Watson. I mean, their system fits. The Patriots can afford to pay him, at least for right now. He won't get the big, big contract, mind you. But, I mean, it could be a good, nice test run. Belichick will see how things work out. We saw this happen with Cam Newton this past season. Cam Newton's obviously going to be out pretty soon here. So, I mean, and the Patriots got some, have, I think they have a good amount of picks coming up in this draft. So, they should be able to get Deshaun Watson some weapons going into that. But, you know, let's let's move on. Now to the fun topic of the day, and I'm gonna and I call this segment Who's Done It Better? LeBron James or Blank. Guys, in this top Okay, Matt over here throwing pens at me for Dropping no reason. Pens. Uh but for this segment, pretty much guys, who flopped better than LeBron James? You can mention any movie, video game, or Hell, even if a celebrity flopped harder than LeBron James, they're up for grabs. Uh, Matt, I mean, who did it better than LeBron James? I'll tell you who flopped better than LeBron James. Wonder Woman 1984. I mean, talk about a disappointment. LeBron James, you're kind of embarrassing yourself getting a reputation for a flopper. But Wonder Woman was a complete failure. When you're talking about a movie that's coming off the coattails of the best thing that DC has ever done in, in, in the original Wonder Woman, and then you make, you make that, that excuse for a movie. I mean, it looked like it was done by an independent film company in Canada. I mean, offense to Canada, but yeah, I mean, it would have been a complete waste of time if it wasn't for Gal Gadot. So let me tell you, it's on Wonder Woman 1984. You're bailing out LeBron James. That flop was worse than anything he ever done. So let me get this straight. You would not recommend Wonder Woman 1984? I would not, unless you just care about watching Gal Gadot do her thing, which, uh, you know, I, I understand. Uh, but, you know, just don't go to the theaters. If you have HBO Max, just do that. Just do that. Don't pay. Don't pay. Yeah, I mean... I haven't seen it yet, so I've been intrigued to watch it, but I'm happy I yeah. just watch the first the first ten it. minutes are pretty interesting. They're pretty okay. cool actually. But then after that, I don't know. I mean 
It's up I, to you, Josh. <laughs> I haven't watched it either, so I mean, th that'd be kind of an experience, but I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> Josh, I mean, who did it better? There's only one answer to this. The video game Anthem. <laughs> there was, n I've What's never heard Anthem. It was, Ooh. it was a video game that, I, as a pretty, pretty dedicated gamer, you could call me, I, I've never heard more like pre-launch hype surrounding a game outside of like Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption, the, the really big ones. I've never heard more hype. Pre-launch, everybody was calling it, it was going to be the next Destiny, the, it was going to be the game that you could dedicate 100,000 hours in, and, and then it launched, and everybody kind of hated it. Every, it was really grindy, it wasted your time, there was no end game, the campaign was rough, and and that's kind of where LeBron's flopping is at. It's just, it's rough. I don't know why the best player in the NBA continues to flop, but at least learn how to flop if you're going to do it. Like, well, don't put yourself in blatant situations where... He's been watching too much FIFA. It's it, way yeah, too I much mean, FIFA. I, I mean, we're, like, if you're going to flop, do it in the right moments and um, sell it better. So either learn how to flop or quit doing it, LeBron. LeBron just needs to talk to some FIFA players and have them. Well, even worse. Yeah, that do, that wouldn't help. Yeah. No, you think it would be worse? Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah, to be, yeah, I guess that's right. I mean, somebody would just le touch LeBron James and he would just go fall flying across the court. So, I mean, guys, to me, there's only one thing that has flopped worse than LeBron in the it just ever. And that's the Emoji Movie. <laughs> the, the movie that should never have been made. Why did they think it was funny making Patrick Stewart a poop emoji and trying to be classy? No. Bad. I don't know, man. I thought it was pretty good. Matt, you can get out. We're <laughs> going to fire you it. from the show. You, know, you are no longer part of Crossing the Line. <laughs> okay? No. But anyway, that's going to do it for us here on today's episode of Crossing the Line. We will see you all next time, and we will continue to try and cross that line.